So thank you very much to the organizer for having invited me. I mean, uh, this is my first uh, uh, workshop in presence after the COVID period. It's a pleasure to be at ESS, also because uh, Oscar Lanford was here when he produced this famous uh, validity result. So it's uh, nice to stay here. So uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, BGK equation and the particular approximation for this equation. And the BGK is a very old equation. Uh, I mean, the, the paper was uh, 45, something like this. Uh, is uh, 54. It's due to Batangar, Gross and Crook. And uh, uh, I mean, for a long time, uh, this equation is very well known in kinetic theory. I always uh, thought that is uh, uh, a sort of uh, toy model, uh, nice to handle with, uh, but uh, not very much connected with the physics. Looking at the original paper, I changed my idea, and I think that is much deeper than, than it may happen at first sight, but uh, I don't know why, <laughs> so <laughs> I want to discuss this point. Uh, so the BGK equation is this uh, kinetic equation here. So here there is the usual uh, stream term f of x and v is the distribution function of uh, one particle. So uh, lambda is uh, is uh, a function of the spatial density. Rho is the spatial density. So MF is the Maxwellian constructed uh, with uh, uh, mean velocity and temperature constructed with uh, uh, F itself. So this is as the basic formulas. I mean, I don't like this definition of T. T is uh, something uh, one over th uh, over three. I mean, we are in three dimensions of the fluctuation field uh, square of uh, the difference of uh, between uh, v and uh, u, that which is the mean velocity. The, um, u is the mean velocity. This is the the mean momentum. So, uh, given f, you can construct such a Maxwellian, and uh, then the the kinetic equation is uh, this. Uh, prefactor e are lambda, and this is uh, the Maxwellian minus f. So uh, we shall assume that uh, everything is in uh, uh, d-dimensional torus, uh, x, and v, as usual, is in rd. OK, so uh, this is uh, uh, the equation, the BGK equation. So uh, it describes the <coughs> dynamics of uh, a target particle, given particle, in a gas, in which at some, I mean, if you want, you can interpret this as, uh, as a, a stochastic, a nonlinear stochastic process. Suppose that you know f, and this is a, <coughs> a jump process, a, a single particle. This is the, the, the law of a single particle which jump at an exponential time uh, uh, modulated by this lambda. And uh, uh, the outgoing state as, uh, uh, is a Maxwellian with uh, uh, special density rho given by f itse itself and the distribution in velocity given by the Maxwellian. So it's uh, an instantaneous thermalization of the particle. Of course, it's a nonlinear process because in order to, to know what is the Maxwellian, you have to know the solution at that moment. So if you want, uh, you can represent this as a stochastic process, a jump process, uh, in the McKean sense, in the sense that you have uh, a differential equation, you solve the differential equation, uh, and you uh, interpret the, the solution as uh, the law of a process. Okay. 
the reason why uh, BGK introduced this equation is uh, practical, they are physicists and practical, in order to simplify the computations when the, you are in, in a sort of intermediate regime between the hydrodynamical limit and the kinetic regime, pure kinetic regime. So in, there, in, in this paper, what is interesting is that the microscopic starting point was the Boltzmann equation itself. So no Newtonian particle. Here everything is stochastic. And uh, the uh, argument of, uh, of uh, uh, BGK is more or less uh, the following. So you have uh, uh, the Boltzmann equation with uh, 1 over epsilon in front of the collision operator, whatever is the collision operator in this case. And uh, uh, so uh, epsilon is very small, so you represent the solution in terms of the Trotter formula by introducing the free stream operator S0, which is this one, and you solve the homogeneous Boltzmann equation with this epsilon in front, which is just a scale of time. So if you fix uh, uh, tau, which is uh, the parameter of uh, tau is uh, defined by um, is, um, is the length of the interval in which you have the free stream, which is also very small. Well, since in presence of this epsilon, if epsilon is uh, much smaller than tau, uh, this is the homogeneous Boltzmann equation. So you know that at the end of the interval, you are almost reached the Maxwellian, which is the equilibrium given by the parameter of F itself. Okay, so instead of using uh, this uh, um, Trotter product formula, you can introduce, uh, uh, because of this uh, as, uh, well known asymptotic uh, behavior, this other Trotter formula, in which uh, Instead of the evolution of the uh, homogeneous part of the Boltzmann equation, you replace uh, this uh, instantaneous transition P, and P is uh, a, <coughs> a transition probability defined in the following way, with uh, uh, probability tau lambda, which is uh, assumed as smaller than 1, uh, you have uh, a jump to uh, the Maxwellian given by the parameter of the previous step. And with probability 1 minus tau lambda, nothing happens. And this nothing happens is because you want to have a, <coughs> a free stream of uh, finite free stream. If you do so, you plug this in the Trotter formula and uh, you add and uh, subtract uh, 1, this is uh, completely standard, you rewrite f at the time and t in this way, you iterate and you find this formula, which is nothing else than the Duhamel uh, formula of uh, some equation. So if, if you pass to the Continuous, uh, continuous version of this, uh, as you, you compute this and uh, you find that 1 over tau times p minus 1 is nothing else than lambda mf minus 1. And so if you uh, pass to the continuous version of this, you arrive to this formula, which is nothing else than the Duhamel formula for the BGK equation. I'm cheating uh, in all directions. This is not uh, the argument of the BGK paper, but uh, they say in words something like this. And uh, the justification is that this projection is uh, uh, less expensive from the numerical point of view than to compute infinitely many 
uh, collisions, which doesn't play any real role when uh, the mean free path is very small. This is what I uh, have understood. It's a very nice paper. Uh, it's the first three, four pages are, uh, are very well re uh, written, very nice. Okay, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, the Boltzmann equation is obtained from Hamiltonian dynamics under very precise uh, scaling law. This is uh, apparently follows some heuristic arguments. So, uh, what uh, uh, we decided that this is a research in collaboration with, uh, <coughs> with Paolo Butta from Rome and Maxime Ore from Marseille. And uh, uh, we mm, started to, to think, uh, you know, uh, uh, how to uh, define a suitable particle system, stochastic particle system, which mimic the BGK in the same spirit than the uh, direct simulation Monte Carlo method, the bird scheme, uh, is related to the Boltzmann equation. The, now, bird scheme is uh, the continuous uh, PD version of the bird scheme is nothing else than the CATS model, the well-known CATS model, with the inhomogeneous part. So you take the CATS model, you define, uh, you say that two particles interact uh, whether they are at some distance and go on. So a uh, non-homogeneous uh, CATS model is nothing else than the direct simulation Monte Carlo method. And actually you can prove uh, <laughs> under certain circumstances uh, which are not very physical, but uh, anyway, you can prove the convergence of uh, this uh, uh, stochastic particle system to Boltzmann equation. Actually, not really the Boltzmann equation, because if you don't scale properly, you get uh, what is called uh, the Povsener equation. It's a sort of regularization of the Boltzmann equation, which uh, the interaction is not strictly local. But who cares at this stage? From a numerical point of view, strictly local interaction doesn't play any role. So uh, we pose the problem of uh, uh, defining a suitable uh, stochastic particle system related to the BGK and try to prove a convergence result. This is uh, the argument of my talk of today. But uh, uh, I'm a little bit, uh, I would be uh, more ambitious, but uh, uh, we, we are not able to produce much more than this. So let me uh, do, uh, what is the situation of, uh, uh, as regards the existence uh, theory for the BGK? Now, BGK is uh, much simpler than the Boltzmann equation. Nevertheless, uh, the, the, <coughs> the, the non-linearity is, uh, is te terrible, it's not bilinear, no? because it's, uh, the non-linearity enters uh, through the Maxwellian. And as far as I know, is an existence, a constructive, uh, I mean, there are uh, uh, some results uh, due per time, essentially, uh, using the um, uh, Dipernalian's approach, so renormalized solution, so compactness uh, uh, argument solution without uniqueness. But there is a result of per time, my, myself, or 93, in which you have uh, uh, an existence and uniqueness result in L1. So, uh, weighted L1 spaces. I, I, I'm not aware of, the, of uh, other result because in the original uh, uh, BGK uh, uh, equation, this lambda of rho is rho. The reason is that when the density is very high, the transition to equilibrium is much more favorished with respect to the, the case when uh, it's small. So physically speaking, uh, you should have uh, a dependence on, uh, on, on rho here. I'm talking uh, in a situation, if you want, unphysical in which lambda rho is 1, 
where it works the, the result of uh, uh, Pertan and myself. But uh, you can take a sort of uh, compromise, you can take lambda depending on rho, but uh, bounded. So when you, at some point you have a sort of saturation. So if it's a function like uh, increasing linearly up to some point and then to go constant is, is something which is more physical than to take lambda equal to 1. And uh, as uh, regards the existence and uniqueness results, you are in a very good shape. So this is uh, something that can be done. OK. So, uh, so uh, we have to take, uh, uh, for the moment, uh, I take lambda equal to 1. So this is the case in which, uh, in which our result, uh, uh, existence result, uh, uh, works well. OK, in view of the introduction of the particle uh, system, uh, I introduce a regularization of the BGK equation in the sense that BGK, the, the, the fields are strictly local and uh, I, to compute the temperature uh, uh, density, temperature uh, and uh, uh, mean velocity, I have to know exactly F computed in the point X. When you have particles, uh, this doesn't make sense, you, you have to, to smear around the point. So it's convenient to introduce uh, a sort of regularized version of the BGK equation, which is this one. So here you have the stream part. And here you have the minus G, the loss part. And uh, the, the jump in the Maxwellian is the jump in a sort of regularized Maxwellian defined in the following way. The Maxwellian is constructed with this field ug phi, tg phi, which are defined in the following way. First, you regularize the density, rho of g is the density of the distribution g, through a, a sort of smearing function phi. And then you construct the uh, momentum and the temperature field according to this formula. So you uh, smear the, if you compute this quantity in x, you smear around x, right? OK, so uh, if you do this, uh, the reason is that uh, if I consider an n-particle system, I have to define what are the empirical fields. And so I do in, the, in exactly in the same way. I consider the d-dimensional torus. Zn is a collection of position and velocities. This is the notation. And so you define the empirical hydrodynamical fields rho n phi, u n phi, and t n phi, according to this formula. For instance, you can think that uh, phi is the characteristic function of a ball, of a given radius. So here, uh, rho phi n of x is the fraction of particle falling in that ball around x. Rho uh, phi n u phi n is the momentum of this uh, set of particles around uh, a given particle, uh, around the point a x. And for the temperature, you have exactly the same formula. So uh, since uh, all this quantity depends on the configuration Zn, I write uh, symbolically uh, the index n. When, when you see the index n, uh, this refers to uh, empirical quantities. Empirical quantities are the quantities constructed through the, uh, an explicit uh, configuration. What do you really see? Okay.
Then you define a stochastic pro uh, process through a generator, which is this one, and n of g's test function. And now uh, what you have is this uh, the operator of the stream. Here is the loss part of uh, this uh, process. And the uh, gain part is represented by the following. So you take the configuration Zn on which you are doing the computation. You remove the uh, position and velocity of the particle i. So what is this configuration? You remove uh, position and velocity of particle i and you replace this by y and w. So uh, th this is the new set. So you, you take uh, x1, so maybe that I can write it's better. This is a notation a little bit. Uh, so x1, xi, uh, xn, v1, vi, vn. So this is the configuration zn. The new configuration zn i of uh, y and w is exactly the same co configuration, but here you put uh, y instead of x, y. Here you, you take the rest of the configuration untouched, and here you put w. So this is the new configuration. Ju you just remove particle i and uh, uh, the mm, coordinates of particle i, the state of particle uh, i, and uh, you replace it by uh, y and uh, w. But how, how, excuse me, so how, how, how do you, I understand that w is sampled according to the Maxwellian, right? Not yet, it is uh, just uh, a kinematical definition. Okay, but the infinitesimal generator? Later, later, I am going to explain. Okay, so this, this, this is uh, the, the configuration. Then the generator is this one. Then I construct the empirical Maxwellian centered in this point. This point means that I compute the uh, uh, empirical field in this point, in the point xi tilde, and as a function of the new variable vi tilde. And I do the average, as you see, over this. And here I remove uh, the, uh, also I have the transition in, uh, in position. So uh, let me explain what is this, uh, what happens for this stochastic process. The process is the following. I have uh, this uh, uh, stochastic process. At each, pa uh, there is at each pa Poisson time of intensity n, so it's very frequent. A particle is uh, chosen with equal probability, thus 1 over n, and perform a jump from its actual position, which is xi vi, to the new one xi tilde and vi tilde. And both are extracted according the distribution phi as regards the position and the empirical Maxwellian as regards the velocity. So yeah, I move both pos position and velocity. So this is uh, the, uh, the generator, uh, g is the test function. And uh, the, uh, the law of the process, of course, I'm, I will assume that the initial law is a pure product state, uh, particle are independent. And uh, the, this is the evolution of the law. The, you take the adjoint of the generator and uh, that's all. Okay, so the results are the following. Two steps. First, uh, uh, you fix uh, uh, phi, the, this meaning function, and show that uh, the particle system uh, at fixed uh, smearing uh, function phi converge to the solution of this regularized BGK equation. So this is the particle stuff. 
and then uh, you take uh, uh, you re you remove you, you you make phi tending to delta at the level of the limiting equation and this is a pure pd problem and you show that g uh, phi converge to the solution the, the real solution of bgk then you of course you can take the diagonal limit uh, and going to infinity simultaneously to delta going to zero according to the estimates you have and this is a very very bad very not honest in the sense that the physics usually prescribes fixed law of, of that we are ignoring this this diagonal limit means that you have to remove delta with the log 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 of n or something like that it depends on the number of, of uh, a Gronwell uh, uh, <laughs> lem you applied in the proof on the particle proof. So it's anyway. So the the result uh, is that if you take the Wasserstein distance of order two, and you compare the J particle distribution function, so under suitable hypothesis, we shall discuss uh, it later. Including in that, uh, we include the fact that initially we assume a factorized states or convergence to factorized states. So the Wasserstein distance between the J particle marginal of the N particle system, uh, my, um, compared with uh, the um, uh, J uh, fold product of the solution of the regularized BGK equation are indeed less than uh, uh, j's over n, this is the typical, times something uh, which is uh, very badly uh, behaving uh, with, uh, with the delta, the cutoff uh, length. I mean, this gamma phi uh, depends on delta in a very bad way. So this is the reason of uh, log log n. <laughs> anyway. And the, the interesting part is the first one. This is uh, just uh, to present the result uh, to get uh, we are doing the limiting equation. But uh, I mean, there is no physical reasons for, for having this. If you do a, a real uh, scaling limit, uh, the problem is much more difficult. Anyway. Good. So this part is uh, purely analysis uh, and uh, I don't uh, discuss. It's completely standard. It's, uh, we, we use the, the estimates of my paper with uh, the upper thumb, the old, and uh, to, to study the decay. <laughs> but uh, anyway, it, it works. And uh, the step two uh, is uh, just analysis. This is, when you compare this distance, you have this. This part is, uh, is the, the, the analytical part. This is the particle uh, stochastic process part, which is uh, the point at which uh, we want uh, to focus. Why uh, W2 and not other norm? Well, in this part, uh, we use a, a weighted L1 estimate. And uh, so it's much stronger the, the convergence. L1 is stronger than uh, W2. But uh, uh, here we use the lower large number, which of course doesn't work in L1. So we need the weak convergence. It is uh, topologies of uh, such two steps are not agreeing. Actually, I hope to, to use uh, the, um, the vast the distance is important uh, uh, because uh, it's a natural when you use the, the technique of coupling the processes that uh, what we are uh, using here. And if you want to recover a strong norm, you, you have to take strong norm at this, uh, uh, you uh, replace the Euclidean distance with something stronger. For instance, L1 is equivalent to the Wasserstein distance with the discrete metric, one and zero. One, uh, zero when two, two points are in the same, po uh, x is equal to y, 
and one otherwise. And if you define the vast SI distance in this way, this topology is equivalent to L1. Uh, so I opened to work in the, and this is very, very natural for the stochastic process, but uh, this doesn't work because uh, we need to, up, to use the low larger number. I'll try to convince you this, and uh, for that uh, we need uh, weaker topology. So it's uh, something technical. Why W2 and not W1 or uh, something else? Uh, this I don't justify. W2 is... Uh, there are more results with respect to the other Wasserstein metric, but uh, in uh, the present context doesn't play any role W2 in particular. Okay. Uh, so uh, here is a sort of a mean field interaction. But uh, uh, the interaction is not binary, so we cannot uh, use hierarchy. I mean, you, the, the hierarchy can be used in the other uh, CATS model, uh, but not here because uh, one particle interacts with the rest of the world. So we, uh, the other possibility is to apply the, always the low large number, but uh, in a different way. So, to give a very uh, rough idea, uh, you take the one particle marginal against the test function, you take the derivative, so you have the derivative of the law, because you integrate over all other variables but the first one. And uh, if you do this, you have the, the good part, which is the stream part. Here you should have minus n, but uh, uh, n minus one terms of this type are exactly compensated by the uh, gain part because the gain part doesn't uh, do nothing all on all particles different by one. So you have n minus one minus n minus one. So it remains minus one here. So you remember the, the generator uh, uh, here you have uh, n here. But suppose that uh, this function depends only on the first particle. This term says something, uh, is not the identity, only when i is equal to 1. The n minus 1 term when i is different from 1, I reproduce exactly g. Why? Because this configuration doesn't change, because I'm changing a dependence which is absent. And here I can integrate over dv, oh, I get one here and one here. So I reproduce exactly g. So I have n minus one terms which compensate this one. This explains why I have uh, uh, here uh, minus one, right? And, uh, uh, and this is uh, the, the gain part. Now I cannot uh, manage with this, but uh, I hope I cross the finger and say if Fn is uh, uh, if Fn is uh, something uh, uh, which is going to factorize, if, if would factorize, then I can use the low large number saying that this empirical uh, distribution converge to this. And so this uh, Maxwellian converge to this. Now, this uh, Maxwellian doesn't depend on all the configurational part of Zn different from x1. So this means that uh, this term I can integrate over all other variables, reducing everything uh, at the dependence of one particle. So the low large number give you the dependence on all other particles, transform this in dependence on a distribution function, right? And distribution function and the, and the, the dependence on, is only on the first variable, right? And so I write this term in this term in this way. I don't know that I am allowed to, to do this. And uh, so at this point you see that uh, the, uh, this doesn't depend on uh, uh, x1, uh, v1 anymore. And so I, uh, I integrate in the v1, I get uh, 
the density, special density. And dx1 I can integrate because now it's free and this gives rise 1. And I get this one. That is the weak form of the BGK. So what is the, the output of this computation is that uh, we don't have a hierarchy, we don't have binary collision. But if I take, if I look at the behavior of particle 1, if I take another particle, say particle 2, the action on the particle 2 on the particle 1 is uh, somehow trivial because it uh, influences the motion of particle 1 through the fact that uh, particle 2 contributes to the construction of the empirical field, but as 1 over n. So particle 2 has a very weak influence on particle 1. So I expect that particle 1 and particle 2 are morally independent. So it remains to put in a uh, concrete, uh, rigorous proof uh, all this uh, convincing argument. So uh, this is what uh, we do. I, I want to, to give you a sketch uh, of the proof because it's, in my opinion, is interesting because it's a maybe that we can do now. Or a comment. Let's, let, let me do now. Com comment later. So uh, I, I can write here. So uh, the, the, the technique of, uh, uh, for proving the convergence uh, is, uh, is uh, a coupling technique. So I, uh, I, I consider the nonlinear process uh, given by the law G. I consider N independent copies of this uh, process and I try to couple this with the n particle system process. The consequence uh, the, is the following generator. I write it here. So I take Zn is the configuration uh, x1 v1 xn vn of the particle system. And then I I get sigma n of uh, y1 w1 yn wn uh, n independent copies of the nonlinear uh, process. I don't write uh, again the, this generator because it's part of what I'm uh, writing here. L of Q is uh, uh, is a process on the on Z n sigma n and a test function G of Z n sigma n is defined in this way. So here there is the stream part. So I have V n dot gradient of x n plus w n dot gradient of uh, y n so uh, blah blah sigma n this is uh, this is x n v n and this is uh, uh, y n w n minus n this applied to G and computed in the configuration uh, Zn sigma n. Now this is the interesting part plus the sum over all i from 1 up to n. So the idea is I try to make a simultaneous jump for the two in order to optimize the coupling. And to do this I introduce uh, the new variable dx tilde i d uh, v tilde i d y tilde i d w tilde i. Then I have a function phi of x i y y of x i tilde 
y i tilde times a function script m of phi of x i tilde v i tilde y i tilde w i tilde and then I have g in which I replaced as before the particle i uh, and uh, I put the particle i with uh, uh, configurations uh, x i tilde v i tilde and I do the same for sigma n with y i tilde and w i tilde. So I have to specify what is this. I have to specify what is this. Well, this is our joint representation of the two Maxwellians. It's clear what is the joint representation is a distribution the product space. If you take the first margin, you get one distribution. The second margin, you get the second one. When you define the a vast distance between two measures, you take a joint representation, you take the distance of the point in which you co uh, compute the joint representation, and then you take the infimum over all possible joint representation. This is the definition of the vast distance. Here I take the optimal joint representation between two Maxwellians. It exists. Uh, I'm working in W2, that is uh, the optimal one, but it works also for, uh, for W1. And the, in here is uh, also an optimal representation between the two phi. Basically means that uh, I move the point xi and the point yy, I, I say it uh, in words so that is better, I think, by the same amount. And then I take the delta function. So they are uh, close as much as possible. So what I'm doing, I, I, I take simultaneously, I take a single exponential time, the two pair of particle, initially, the law of this process is exactly a delta function of the product. So the configuration are uh, with the probability one the same. The same. But at some point they can change. But uh, I try to make the minimum changement possible to, ma to optimize the Wasserstein distance. And what I do is I take the best representation, I mean, the, after a jump, the two particles which initially are at the same position with the same velocity, forget the position for the moment, look at the velocity. The, the velocity change because they are uh, jumping according to two different uh, Maxwellians. And so a joint representation of that, uh, maybe I don't know if they are centered at the same, you have to take the infimum of the Maxwellian and the rest is uh, distributed according to the product. You make an error, which is uh, as small as possible if uh, the distribution are close. But the distribution are close if uh, the, the distribution are close if the, the, um, the, the function g is close weakly to the actual configuration of the particle system. In other words, it's, it works the, the lower large number. Anyway, one, one has to, 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 to do the computation. And what you find... One question. So when you, Please. when you do this optimal coupling of the two Gaussians, they are not jointly Gaussian. They won't no, 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 no. I, I don't know what is this joint representation. I, I, I take the average. I, I use... A, I, I know that it exists something that optimizes. I don't know what is, and uh, but in my context, what uh, I produce uh, a lemma theorem, which says that if I compute the difference, I get the distance between the 
uh, velocity and the temperature, it's nothing else. So the velocity is the center of the Maxwellian. And the, the, so I, I can say you th this fact that uh, the integral of m of phi d uh, uh, x uh, dy dv dw uh, x minus y square plus v minus w square is equal to uh, u of uh, No, it's I have to take uh, to take the modifying. Uh, so, sorry, because uh, so wh wh what I'm applying is that uh, forget uh, the position because uh, here the position are modified. I have just uh, two Maxwellian. What I'm applying is the following. I have just two Maxwellian. What I'm applying is that the difference is equal, if this is the optimum, to the difference between uh, uh, u, let's say u1, the uh, mean velocity of this, and u2, the mean velocity of the other Gaussian, u2 square plus so this is at the square, so uh, plus the square root of t1 minus square root of t2 uh, square. This formula, I use this formula. It's clear that uh, if the Maxwellian have the same covariance uh, the Wasserstein distance is the distance of the centers. If they have the same centers, so it's the, this. How to r realize this is not difficult, but uh, it's, it's a, for the, the first case is just a translation. For the other is a d dilatation. So, but the, what I asked was that the joint, they are not jointly two dimensional or two D dimensional Gauss. You can't realize. No. Why two dimensional? In any dimension. Ah, okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Twice the V dimension and the W. So I use this, uh, and uh, if I compute the. Uh, if I compute, so uh, in my context, uh, the quantity I want to estimate uh, is this one. is i n of t is equal uh, to the integral of d r n. What is r n? So the initial law is a delta function over a product state. It evolves according to the generator, actually to the adjoint of the generator. And so, uh, this is, uh, uh, I define this, uh, x1 minus y1 square plus v1 minus w1 square. Actually, I mean, uh, uh, according to the law talk, I should symmetrize this quantity because when I take the derivative, I find uh, other difference. But uh, everything is symmetric in my context, so no problem. And th then I if I take e dot of n of t, this is less than e, e n of t, and that is good, plus plus the integral of dr n, that is the integral of this c of this uh, form function phi of xi, and then I have u phi n x1 minus xi 
minus u phi g uh, y1 minus xi uh, to, the uh, to the power 2. This is the square of the Wasserstein distance plus this other term, similar term for the temperature that is more difficult to handle with. Now I want to just uh, to remark that uh, here instead of this you can add and subtract u of phi of uh, uh, n which is the empirical field on the y variable. So from one side I try to reconstruct x minus y and so I reproduce a term like this. On the other I have the field computed in the average and the empirical distance. But this is an uh, independent process, so I can apply the low large number. So this is the idea. The idea is cabling plus low or large number on the independent process. So since uh, my interacting process is uh, morally close to, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's a self-compatibility uh, argument to, to uh, an independent process, I try to to uh, charge the, the part of low large number on the independent process and the rest is a difference which is what I have to estimate. So at the end I get uh, Gronwell uh, morally, uh, the, I, I, there are a lot of other terms due to the temperature, it's not so simple I'm saying but it's uh, conceptually simple. E dot is less than constant time i arising from the error uh, uh, u uh, x minus u of uh, y plus a term order one of square root of n due to the low large number. That's all you can achieve. Now uh, let me uh, comment if we have uh, another five minutes. Uh, yeah, this is not so satisfactory at all because uh, first uh, we don't have uh, understood much about uh, the possibility of uh, giving a, a particle sense to the BGK equation. This is a sort of uh, uh, Monte Carlo method for the BGK but uh, nothing more. And there are some hypotheses that I don't like. In our paper uh, the function phi is bounded from below. The, the fact that uh, phi uh, may be zero creates the divergence because uh, when, when you compute u is the sum over all j of uh, phi times v divided by the sum over all phi. If you have local vacui, uh, uh, vacuum, you are in trouble. You cannot uh, estimate via Lipschitz bound and so on. Since uh, in the first uh, lazy, in the first paper, we say, okay, let's assume that that is not nice because, you know, the physic physically you are uh, upgrading your state according to what you see around, not everywhere. So long range interaction doesn't enter in, in the, the game. So this must be removed and uh, uh, we are doing this. Uh, it's, uh, it's possible. It, the, the system behaves in a rather homogeneous way for which the number of particles in a ball is is a constant less than 1 times n from below. This is uh, possible to be proved and so this uh, uh, is a mess. Uh, it's, it's not satisfactory. And then, the, this is uh, uh, also interesting, uh, we want uh, to remove the fact that the lambda is uh, uh, independent of rho. If lambda is depending on rho, it is uh, another problem in defining the the process because uh, this means that the typical time of uh, one system and the other are different because one jumps with the rate uh, 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 lambda rho 1 and the other with the rate uh, lambda rho 2. So one way is to take, uh, you, you, you make the two processes jumping with the same prescription with the minimum of the two lambda and then you uh, take, uh, you move as independent process the other or you adju adjust the time of jump, that is very complicated. It's a non-linear <coughs> way of doing this. So this is, uh, is a sort of a work in progress, it's not uh, 
uh, not obvious. But uh, uh, I don't know if the BGK can be justified in terms of a scaling limit, not apparently not, as it seems uh, uh, to be heuristically founded, but maybe that one can prescribe in terms of the typical scale in, ma in uh, a more precise manner than uh, what I presented at the beginning, how to uh, derive the BGK. This is something interesting. And it's not uh, uh, academic because uh, recently I realized that there is a lot of papers on gas mixture uh, using BGK as intermediate between the hydrodynamics and so on. And the, what is uh, very strange is that uh, also in the mathematical literature, the BGK models are uh, very different from each other. So uh, in absence of uh, precise prescription, actually I think because there are uh, various scales uh, of time, in the sense that if you put a mixture of gas and whatever is the BGK, at some point you have a global thermalization. But you are interested in an intermediate regime in which the two species are not completely separated and there is probably there is a scale of time in which each species thermalizes. At this point, uh, the people to try to describe this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, I'm finished. <laughs> uh, in, 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 uh, when you thermalize separately and, uh, and before going to global thermalization, this is unclear. But uh, if you don't uh, control uh, <laughs> what happens with a single species, there is no hope. So the, this is uh, the, the program to try to understand a little bit better what happens uh, when you have a mixture. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Actually, I was not looking at the clock, I was looking at the fact that... No, yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 but uh, I mean... Uh, so, yes, there's yes, time for questions. For one over so there. No, I can't see the, the main theorem at the moment, but you, you don't rescale this uh, mollifying function <coughs> of phi n to be a Dirac in the... In the limit n going to yes, no. In the limit n, I mean, I do two separate limit and then I take the diagonal limit. But okay, but you could you could also do it directly. Yes, yeah, I could do in principle, but uh, yes, I could do. But this is not very honest in the sense that I do what I said. Then I s I say what is the dependence of delta from n on n, and then uh, I formulated the, the theorem in this way, but the reader uh, cannot understand why. <laughs> I, would sorry, I would like to ask, I mean, in the kind of original BGK model, for some of the main quantity you control is the entropy. And I mean, you have not, as far as I consider now in this talk, or noticed in this talk, you have not used it at all at any stage. Did you try it or is there something like that? No, I mean, the, the BGK is, uh, has all the conservation law and the H theorem, and so are exactly the same hydrodynamics than the Boltzmann equation, which is not, by the way, the true hydrodynamics, but the hydrodynamics of low density gas. And it's the same, absolutely the same. So, in some sense, uh, uh, one can justify that in a regime in which the mean free path is very small, uh, both models converge to the same thing, that is a local Maxwellian, but, <laughs> but it's not, do, do this because you have no control on the, the uh, v, yeah, it's not the distribution, it's the average which converge in this sense, so the, the, the equation I itself you have no control on, on that. The physical coefficient is not the same if you take lambda p1. Uh, the diffusion coefficient? The diffusion? If you take lambda to be one. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, now you say that. Uh, now what is the hydrodynamics? Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Good, 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 good. Yes. The, with the Boltzmann, I get the low of perfect gas in the uh, Euler equation. Let's take the compressible regime. For that. You say that uh, uh, lambda of rho creates a sort of correction to the... No, to not to the Euler, to the Navier-Stokes, actually. Uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm talking first to Euler. 
not correct. Euler is the same. No, I mean, yeah, 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 no, Navier-Stokes. Uh, not, I mean, not, not, not talking both the Navier-Stokes and the incompressible limit uh, is uh, different. I don't know, by the way, uh, technically speaking, for the BGK, I have not, I'm not aware of analysis of the hydrodynamical limit because since the interaction is not bilinear, the Hilbert's expansion doesn't work. No? You can do that. Yeah, I know that, that you did it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you did uh, what you did, the, the incompressible, right? Uh, scaling yeah. for the BGK as uh, preparation for the boats. Yeah, 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 I remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I think the question was whether you use the entropy in this, in this thing. No, I mean, uh, this uh, may be that. Uh, Okay, so from particle to kinetic equation, if it is Hamiltonian, uh, there is nothing to do. Y you have to, to work. For stochastic system, there is the Varadan method, uh, which is very effective. I don't control it, uh, so I, I go by hands. So yes. <laughs> the Varadan method, uh, I should ask to Rezzancalo if uh, uh, you can have. Uh, but I'm, uh, in, the, in this case, uh, since the interaction is not binary, I'm not uh, convinced that maybe that the entropy method can work. Yes, I don't. I, I don't know the answer. Other comments or questions? Actually, I can can ask one. Uh, yes. So, if I understand that correctly, one one important point is that you are the interactions are non-binary, but that uh, uh, as usual that they depend weakly on each particle. Can you quantify in, in which sense the it must depend weakly so that your scheme works? I mean, if I'm thinking of another maybe abstract equation, in which sense do I need that the interaction depends weakly on each particle for uh, for the scheme to work? I mean, there is the rate in front. It's one over n. Yeah, but then you have to. Me I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, one the uh, given one particle, it has uh, a jump. Uh, Finite number, the jump for finite uh, time. So this is the point, the main point. So yeah, but typically, one thinks of uh, so you have a function of many particles, and it will converge to a function of just the. Implication. I mean the, the, the J dependence. I mean the the correlation. You say the order of correlation. What could be interesting in the J dependence? What could be interesting in which sense it converges to uh, to uh, uh, function on uh, just the equal measure. Or maybe it's not a, a relevant question. No, I'm not understanding. The, the, the convergence to, to the solution of the limiting equation or what? No. You, have a, you have a new interaction, which is a function of all the positions. Yes. And it depends, in some sense, weakly on each one. So it converges to a function just of the empirical measure. No, but why you say that it depends weakly? I mean, the behavior of a given particle depends uh, weakly by the behavior of another tagged particle mm -hmm. that is different uh, that uh, the quantity uh, under the interest are w uh, weakly dependent on, on the states of a given particle. Is it not true? I'm not sure what you... No, I mean, what, what, what I, I said before is that if I f if sit down over a given particle... Yeah, so if you differentiate with respect to one particle, just one, then the, 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 this, uh, this derivative is smaller. I think it's it's a, a mean field limit. So essentially, you you assume that close to any so in each ball, you have a microscopic pro proportion of your n particles. So you have typically something of the order of n particles, and then you you say that you have this jump process, which is just like cat. Mm -hmm. and, and count count one over n. Yeah, mm -hmm. one over n. So it's mean field. Yeah. Sure. It's no la low density or something like this. It's mm -hmm. Works all good. So we say can close the session of this morning and thanks to most speakers. Okay.